Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. I went to Nam, and this is kind of gonna be a half commentary, half vlog type of vlog thing, because it was it was a whirlwind. It was absolutely amazing. Nam stands for National Association of Music Merchants, and I can't wait to share with you my experiences. Hey fam, we almost missed our connecting flight uh, because in Appleton we were delayed because of the snow, but we made it just in time. We just ran, so we're on our way to Anaheim. I'm really excited to see you. Love you. Hey fam, we just arrived at LAX. We're really excited to go to the Anaheim Convention Center. So there's a lot of turbulence. What do you think about that? Uh, the turbulence, I don't like turbulence. <laughs> I don't like it either. <laughs> So my experience was a little different because I went with Hyde Music and also as a performer. So I had two hats to wear pretty much and I was running everywhere. I had so many meetings, but it was it was really, really amazing to learn about the buying process and how that works and how representatives visit each store and basically do training. And they also show you new products, what's coming out, what's working for the store, what's not working for the store, how they can make them successful. It was really, really interesting being on that side of the table to see, okay, what's the business side of music? And a lot of these representatives, I'd say, no, let me take that back. All of these representatives are music lovers. They're passionate about music. They're still playing in bands and they still are very much involved in the music community. So it's really nice to know that somebody's not just trying to sell you something and they don't know anything about it. Like these people are very, very knowledgeable, very passionate about their company and what they do. I literally thought I was going to be able to have all the time in the world, but when I walked into the showroom, I mean, it was just, it kept going and going and going. It's just booth after booth after booth after booth and people everywhere. And someone once described Nam as uh, being at a guitar center on a busy Saturday times 10,000. And they were right. <laughs> it was so noisy. Lots and lots of people like playing and shredding everywhere. It was really cool to wit witness so much talent. But it did get a little overwhelming at times where I did have to just retreat. I remember um, after Friday, I was so fried after I performed twice, ran around to a bunch of meetings, and <laughs> I was exhausted. Just I was literally booking it from one end of the convention center to the other, and I was so tired that I just I went to my room at 6 p.m. and I didn't come out for the rest of the night. <laughs> that tired. I've also got to meet some amazing people. You know, people that you never think that you're ever going to meet in person. I mean, these are all people that I really respect and uh, some of them I've been watching or when I was doing research for my YouTube channel, I, I, I've seen these people before and I, I've watched their videos to help get a, a gain my bearings of like what this whole YouTube thing was about when I started a couple years ago. And now I'm getting to meet them in person. Definitely don't feel as alone. Sometimes YouTube and social media, not sometimes, a lot, can feel very isolating. You feel like you're alone. You feel like you're going crazy or like you're doing something wrong. Um, but then you have other people that are going through the same thing that you are and just saying like, no, reassuring that, no, you're doing fine. You're doing great. And um, being very encouraging to each other. Like every single person that was there was so incredibly kind and nice. And um, I, I wanted to connect with people, I just didn't know that I was going to connect with people on such a deep level. Delicious. <laughs> What's in it? Vegetables. It's even nicer and cheese. We have a great view. <laughs> You're so sweet. <laughs> I love you guys. I love you guys.
So it was on my bucket list to one, see Chris Fujigami play live. That was on my bucket list. And a couple of my Uke friends here in Appleton, that's on their bucket list too. So I beat them, haha. <laughs> And another thing on my bucket list was to be able to see Cynthia Lynn and actually just meet her in person uh, and Abe Lagrimas Jr. and Ukuleni. And I got to meet them and I got to go to an amazing concert. It was just phenomenal. <laughs> so much talent in that room it was just absolutely insane and crazy I just couldn't believe like some of the things that they were playing and singing and it was so much fun because they're more than just musicians they connect with the audience so well and they're able to draw that emotion out of the song because music is more than just notes on a page you want to do more than that you want to tell a story and they just did a really amazing job of telling that story, whether it was silly and funny, like Ukuleni had a story, a song about how his wife is a pescatarian. And when they were first dating, he's like, you don't eat meat? What? I would die yet for you. <laughs> so it was, it was an amazing song. And it was, yeah, just everybody was just laughing so hard, laughing so hard, you're crying. It's really good. dream come true of mine was to meet some subscribers and this is from Sonic Uke that is an ukulele club in Burbank, California and just how incredibly sweet to meet them and I I can't thank them enough they are so incredibly kind and she gave me a t-shirt and a banner and uh, flowers for me and also for my daughter. It's just really, really sweet. And then showed me a video of her children singing uh, songs from my tutorials <laughs> or the little quirky things that I do in my videos. So I thought that was incredibly sweet. That was a dream come true of mine to be able to meet subscribers like that's my dream come true to be able to meet you guys and um, just to be able to give you a hug and to say hi and that's that means a lot to me what a crazy day <laughs> but it's been awesome I got to meet a bunch of my musical heroes freaked out in front of them <laughs> I really did but it was just I just couldn't believe that it was happening that they were all there and um, what an amazing privilege it was to see them and uh, I got to meet a bunch of subscribers too. And you have no idea that that's my dream come true, meeting you, getting to talk with you. It's awesome. So um, tomorrow uh, I have 11 o'clock Canilea, uh, noon at Cordoba. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm still coughing. It's just super frustrating. I wish that I was 100% for this, but you know, it is what it is and you just gotta try to accept it. So I'm going to try to get some sleep and I hope you have a wonderful night and know that you are deeply loved. Bye. Now performing is just a very different thing for me because where I, where I mostly play and it is a place where I serve. I, we are volunteers. We do not get paid. I, I volunteer at a church and I've been doing that for um, the past 10 years. And the church that I attend is, is very large where uh, the sanctuary holds 1,800 people and there are three services. But it's, it's, I feel like it's different because, um, you know, when I'm singing <clears throat> and playing for, for the Lord, everybody is there for the same purpose, to glorify God or, you know, trying to uh, point people to the attention off of yourself. And so then when it comes to perform, when they asked me to perform, it was just a little different for me. Uh, I felt very much like a fish out of water. Um, you know, if, if I can, you know, put into words how it felt and plus all of my musical heroes ended up showing up at the booth and I'm just, yeah, that made me really, uh, it made me a little nervous. <laughs>
Hey fam, it's day two of the NAMM show. I'm going to take you along with me to a couple of meetings and then I perform a couple of times and then I'm going to have a green tea latte as a celebration. <laughs> I know, I party hard, but um, I'm still coughing. I really appreciate your prayers. Uh, my voice is what it is, but you know what? You just gotta roll with it. I love you very much and I hope you're having a great day. Bye. But when Friday rolled around, you know, I was able to take a deep breath and just say, you know what, this is this is who I am. This is, I don't have to be anything else other than myself. And um, I felt like I was able to communicate what I wanted to communicate through the music on my Friday performances. I was very proud of those. You guys, it's six o'clock and I'm ready for bed. <laughs> But uh, thank you so much for those of you that have been uh, DMing me and just saying we've been praying for you. I felt your prayers. I felt your prayers in full force. So thank you so much. Um, both of my sets, they went really well. I'm really happy with them. And um, I think it was because I just felt like, one, I could feel your prayers. Two, I felt like I could just be myself. I, like, this is, this is it. <laughs> this is what you're gonna get. Um, but it really felt comfortable and um sorry I, have, I still I'm still coughing but the cool thing is about the whole thing is that I didn't cough when I was singing not once not even a little bit yeah it was pretty and actually after everything was done then I started coughing again um but I didn't post in between because it was just such a whirlwind running back and forth up and down I you know, I work out, but this was a workout, just running from booth to booth, trying to make as many meetings as I possibly could. Excuse me. <laughs> but uh, I am celebrating with this. Oh yeah. Yeah. You're, you're like, Katie, dairy kind of hurts your tummy. Like, this is going to be worth it. <laughs> it's going to be so worth it. So here's to you. Um, I love you guys. Like, I loved being able to talk to the representatives because they are the experts of their their field of their brand and it was really really fun to be able to see them get excited about tell me what you love about it um it's it's a beautiful piece of flame maple on the back it uh, is beautiful solid here. back inside oh here turn that toward the light a little bit more that is pretty. I don't know if you can catch that. Here, turn it a little bit more this way. Yes, there she is. Wow, that's pretty. Wow, that's um, lovely. For it's, for it's, you know, it's a jumbo size, but it is incredibly lightweight, super resonant. You can feel the vibrations, you know, right across the chest. I like that. Um, it's also uh, one of the easiest 12 strings I've ever played. The action is so dialed in, perfectly even across the entire neck. Um, you know, you bar chords up on the higher fire frets. It's, I mean, it's, I it's super easy. So jumbo size is perfect for me, right? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> The other thing that's really cool about this is the, uh, the back press that we're using to press the maple backs for the F512 maple. Um, it's the same press from the original factory in New Hartford, Connecticut. Um, it pressed backs for Tom Petty's guitars, Bonnie Raitt's guitars, David Gilmore's. Uh, so, you know, the machine itself is, is a piece of history and, it, you know, we're still making guitars with it today. So I got to talk to one of the guys at Yamaha. I was able to actually capture that on film. Hey family, I'm here with Yamaha. I'm so excited to be able to introduce a new product to you. This is Carl from Yamaha. He's been with Yamaha for eight years. So Carl, what do you have for us here? This is brand new for this year. Now the Trans Acoustic uh, and the technology of the Trans uh, technology has been out for about a decade. It started in our pianos. Uh, and it's migrated to the steel string, and now it's finally made its way to our classical guitars. So this is cool because I was never that huge of a fan of nylon string guitars until I played this guitar. And then I can't hardly put it down. We can 
dial in a little uh, really nice reverb on it, dial in a little chorus to give it a little... So it's wonderful and the really cool thing about this is it doesn't have to be plugged in but if you're out doing gigs somewhere, it's got a quarter inch out, you plug in everything that you're hearing inside of the guitar now gets sent to front of house. See, and it's off right now, so when you start playing, I will, I, if you don't mind, I'll just reach and I'll actuate it for you. Okay, go ahead. Okay, so, well, no, you can start playing. Oh, you start, start playing. playing. Okay, sorry. I felt that. I felt that Excuse against me. my body. do some uh, events and hide music. I would love to come back. Oh, I would love, we'd love to have you back. That'd be wonderful. Just poke him in the eye. <laughs> <laughs> Bring me back. Poke him in the eye, yes. Well, that uh, makes friends. Not, not literally. <laughs> Thanks, Carl. Bye. Oh my goodness, this is gorgeous. Amazing. Right here? Yeah. Oh, I that's just lovely. Now you, now you heard it. Because I went with the store, I had a, a different level of access. So I was able to attend um, a lot of the buyers' meetings where uh, like the morning sessions were really, really interesting. Uh, got to hear the CEO of Roland and the new CEO of Gibson and how they are working to make uh, the businesses better and innovating because, you know, Gibson filed for bankruptcy, uh, if you don't know that, and Gibson is iconic, an iconic brand finally bankruptcy. Oh my gosh, it's almost sounds like panic through people thinking like, how could something so iconic go through bankruptcy? Well, he explained, you know, how basically how they went bankrupt and how they're trying to make Gibson great again. Okay, so we've been through, uh, you might have heard we went through a little obstacle course and, uh, and we're through it and uh, I'm so excited and uh, I don't know if you've ever done an obstacle course where you do, but it's here. But when you do get through it, you look back and go, man, let's make it worth it, you know, in terms of what we're going to do next. And uh, I can tell you that in the last few months, the team is energized, and I truly did say, let's let's take advantage of the fact that we're through this obstacle, and now let's rebuild opportunity and the brand and the team is in. What, what still inspires you? What still, musically, or what still gets you thinking creatively? When you've done so much, and you can say, oh, I'm good, I got it, you know. What makes you still? I think um, being a creative person, you um, you um, you spend a lot of time um, dreaming up things that you want to say or how you want something to sound or what you want to how you want to affect somebody that's listening. Now, Didi Hai Chi is a part of something called the SWIM team, which is smart women in music have leadership roles within the music business, whether it's with buying or being a CEO or a store owner or being a performer, you know, anything like that. So it was really amazing to hear two amazing musicians speak about their experiences and talk about what it's like being a professional musician um, as a woman and also not just saying like, yay women, but it's yay everybody, that it's a joint effort, men and women together making the music business uh, a great place. So I thought that that was really insightful. I started playing trumpet. I remember the first thing everyone would say is, oh, you know what's going to make your lips look funny and this da 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 I pay that no mind. I just knew I wanted to play trumpet. Being able to meet the faces behind the brands because some brands have communicated with me via email, but actually being able to see them face to face and just what incredibly kind and conscientious people they are that really care about their product, they really care about their brand, and they care about you. 
So it's, it's nice to see that because sometimes, you know, you think of business as something to be cold and calculated when, when these people, they really do care. It's, it's good to see that. So basically it's going to be get in, get out, and then hop a plane back to Wisconsin and to celebrate my daughter's birthday. I love you guys so much. Have a good day. Now, would I go again? Uh, if I were asked to go again, and if I were be able to go again, that I think it'd be a wonderful experience, uh, especially uh, having one <laughs> experience underneath my belt. It's definitely, uh, I definitely would know what to expect, one, and two, how to allot my time. So yeah, I hope that I can go again. And if you're able to go, I hope that you're able to go too. So I hope to see you in the next one and thanks for watching, bye. Hey fam, I made it home safely. Whew, it's a long trip, but it was a good one. So just, just want to tell you good night and I love you. And 